As the midterms approach, many of the nation's youngest voters are gearing up to hit the polls, but there is still concern over how many Gen Zers will actually show up at the ballot box. Morning Joe reporter Daniela Pierre Bravo has been speaking with some of Arizona's young voters about what issues are important to them and will they show up? And Daniela joins us now. What did you hear, Daniela? Hey, good morning, Mika. In Arizona, actually, Latinos make up almost 30 percent of the state's population and about 40,000 young Latinos become eligible to vote each year. We traveled to Tucson, Arizona, to talk to young Latino voters about the upcoming midterms and what's motivating them to get out and vote. For me, personally, the top three has always been immigration, reproductive rights, and climate change. So those are, like, things that I'm always looking for on the ballot. It's hard to pick the number one issue right now. I mean, especially being college students and the rising costs of everything around us, I think that climate change is definitely up there, inflation, and then affordable education. You're planning on voting in the midterms? Absolutely. Do you know who you're voting for yet? Yes. I'll Good. be voting for Democrats all down the ballot. You're a strong Democrat. I'm a strong Democrat. <laughs> um, and it was strengthened after January 6th. My number one issue is the, st the strength of our democracy. What do Democrats need to be doing better to reach out, not only to just your generation, but your community of, of uh, family and friends that are Latino? I think there's a lot of promises. We get a lot of promises. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We'll enact this. And then you vote, and they're there, and it doesn't happen. I'm still a Democrat. My views haven't changed, but it's disheartening to know that we've, we've put you there. We've elected you to represent us. We've trusted you, and it still feels like we're in the same rut that we were in before. I sometimes feel like the Democrat Party is a branding. Well, if I represent myself as a Democrat, I'm going to get the minority vote, or I'm going to get um, more people's votes uh, because I'm a Democrat. Uh, but I don't think that necessarily means that they are doing enough to prioritize and work on issues that are important to minority communities. I'm wondering, has anybody reached out to you, um, anybody's campaign, to talk to you and get you involved and get you excited about voting? That is so crazy that you mentioned that because I probably get about five texts a day that are about political campaigns. And actually, I get more Republican texts than I do Democrat text. I get a lot of Republican text. It doesn't work too much on me, but I could definitely see how it works on older Latinos, my parents, my grandparents. I know like I get more ads and more texts and more just information about conservatives than I do about um, Democrats. I think for me personally and other people, it's like we have a vote that kind of votes for, speaks for other people, especially with DACA recipients here, Proposition 308, they don't get to vote on that. So your vote is not just for you, no. but it's for other people in I, your community? Yeah, I think so. I have a lot of family who is non-residential who can't vote, so I feel like they do kind of lean on me to say, like, you're 18 now, make sure that you're voting, make sure you're getting out there, and make sure that you're going for what you believe in. We can host uh, Latinx Get Out the Vote canvases, and we can have Hispanic Heritage Month events, but if we're not acting boldly on policy that's going to impact us in a way that's going to better our lives, then none of it matters. The Dobbs decision was something that was important for mm -hmm. you actually motivated you to get out and vote. Yeah, I think it sort of made me realize the impact that a lot of these even smaller elections have on really large decisions. We've gone so many years with having it. My mother had it, my grandmother had it, but it's like I don't get to have it. And it just feels like I don't think anyone besides myself really has the right to tell me when, where, and how to reproduce. You're obviously going to hear an uproar from our generation if we're getting rights taken away from us. At the time, I was pregnant, and just to think that if something had gone wrong in my pregnancy, there would have been a decision for me to like terminate my pregnancy, even though I wouldn't have wanted it, but it would have been medically like necessary. I would have chose to go with medically necessary just because that's me and like it's me, my body. I feel like having Roe versus Wade overturned, that's just like cutting off our voices. If they like do that to us now, it's like, we can do something else again. They could get away with attacking other rights. Yes, yes. like yes. for instance, our voting right or just other rights in general. Do you guys still believe in the American dream? I believe deep down it's there, but it's out of reach for so many folks. Do right you feel now. like it's out of reach for you? At this moment in time, yes. 
So although you get a sense of disillusionment there overall with the state of politics, these voters are voting exactly for that. That is what it's fueling them to get out and vote. And one thing to note about these young Latino voters, Mika, is the responsibility they feel on behalf of friends and family who can't vote. So non-residents and undocumented family members and friends who are DACA recipients, which makes a section of Latino voters in Arizona unique. And another thing to note there is the generational differences that many of them spoke to me about. All of these voters identified as Democrats, but expressed that they don't always match up with their family's views. And many mentioned mm. not feeling a strong loyalty to their party, as much as looking for a candidate on either side that would champion issues important to them, economy, reproduction rights, and climate change being the top three. All right. Morning, Joe reporter Daniela Pierre Bravo. Thank you very much. And Willie.